I just want you to understand this is not a good day for you. You know, you know, I honestly, I don't feel like you're going to do as bad as you think you're going to do. I feel like it's going to hurt a little bit, but I expect worse. Well, forgive me. My jersey didn't come in just yet or else it would be yeah. much, much worse. But um... that's fair. <laughs> well, you ha- well, here's the problem. Before you try to say, you never told me whose jersey you want yet, by the way. So really, it's your finals fault. MVP. I said finals MVP. But you also told me you might not want Curry. So you never finalized. I was trying to see maybe, you know, do I do I get Draymond's Draymond? All, I have I have a green jersey on the way, so it's fine. You think yeah, I'm I swear to God, if I open this box and it has a freaking green jersey in there, I'm going to burn it with my and we'll get into it. I mean, this yeah. guy is something else, man. I don't but you have a question for us. Let's let's just get yeah. into it. Let's let's you know all these all these, you know, playoffs and whatnot, just have me think if you like, I don't know, because it's all, they, you know, they make these big deals about all these players. But, like, if you could pick one celebrity, so it doesn't have to be sports, but it's like one celebrity, okay. alive or dead, to have dinner with, who would it be? Like, who do you think would have some of like the most interesting conversations, like a, a good, just a good dinner? Like, you could talk to, about anything. Okay. So I don't want to give my obvious answer away just yet until we both give okay. our truthful. I, I I don't. If you pick the same person as me, I I will buy you two jerseys because there's no way you're picking who I'm picking. So go ahead, just say who you want. Well, well, I think we will both agree on this second person. I don't think we have okay. necessarily the first person. Honestly, this is a good question. I feel like there's a lot of honorable mentions. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I I, I want to just talk to Alexander the Great and see like, did he really do that? Like I don't believe it. Like you know yeah, I mean? there's part of me that just wants to like pick like some like guy from way back in the day, just like that just ran countries and like was a tyrant and was like the world's mine. And just to see like what he's like, but also you, that's you not who I, mean? I want because like he might just come and murder me. So <laughs> the dinner well, might not well, end well. <laughs> well, that's why my <laughs> that's why my second person I feel like we will both agree on. But I want to hear yours. Who's yours? I would go Hank Aaron honestly, like the true home run king. Like, give okay. me, I like, because one, like, he went through so much in his life, and also just as a Braves family, I want to hear all those stories. I want to know, like, everything, like, hitting that home run, like, becoming the true home run king, and whatnot, like, just like his entire life. Oh, crap. Well, now I feel like an idiot because there's a sports podcast, so I should have picked a soccer or like a. a I, I like, I mean, like, I debated also, like, Abe Lincoln. Like, I feel like just having the like, conversation with him would be pretty cool. There's just so much stuff yeah. in history that I'm like, that's cap. Like, there's no way. Like, I just want to, like, no way you, all, like, ran that joint. Like, Hitler, why did you want to do this? Why are you the way you <laughs> <laughs> Like, could, if you go to dinner, could you, you know, poison them and change the world? No. So it's like, I feel like at that point, you have to. At that pay, point, like, you just got to ask the question. Yeah. There's an elephant in the room. Let's just talk about the elephant in the room. Because, like, Especially if you know like what's gonna happen, you're like, well, we need to talk. Well, it's not a podcast. <laughs> we we gotta talk about this. <laughs> like a time machine. <laughs> Just you yeah. step back and well, if we're gonna do a sports guy, I guess I'm gonna have to do the go. Uh, so it's Jordan. Yeah. Okay, cool. Gotcha. Oh, oh. See, is it you're ready on my oh okay. <laughs> But Ryan Reynolds, I would love to have a dinner date with him. The problem is, he would just be like, can you eat? I'm like, no, I'm staring at your beautiful face right now. Like, I just, the whole but, dinner, I'd just be staring. But, like, is that the bad, is that such a bad yeah, thing? That's fair, that's fair. He, like, man. Yeah. Talk about trust issues. Honestly, but, yeah. Yeah. I, I, let's get into the news of this, because let's, I'm not going to lie to you. It. I don't want to talk about the first thing on the list. I do not, because we did not, we don't have anything about it. But give it to me. Give me the first thing. Oh, God. I I'm so excited. Um, we're we're going to talk more about this probably in the next couple of months because, I mean, this isn't going to happen for years. But World Cup in 2026, they announced what cities in North America are going to have games. They haven't announced what games yet. Um, but in, Mex- in, in Mexico, you have Mexico City, Monterey, and Guadalajara. All big names, all great stadiums. Kind of expected those. And then in Canada, Toronto, and Vancouver, makes sense. They right. have soccer teams. Um, and then in the U.S., you got 
Seattle, San Fran, Philly, Miami, uh, Houston, Dallas, Kansas City, Boston, LA, New York slash New Jersey, and then good old Atlanta. Bring me the World Cup. I'm so excited. Unfortunately, the day this you know this news broke, it was not a great day later in the evening for me. Right. But I mean, I'm still excited, and I think you know we probably can make a pod fully about just like what we think each city kind of brings to about to the World Cup and how it's going totally. to make how it's going to make it like its own unique. Because that's the thing, like this isn't just going to be like one country, like you know showing it off its country like there's gonna be so many different like atmospheres when it comes to these right. games because they're so different so i'm really intrigued to watch what they all do for that and how it's going to be kind of brought upon and of course who met life i think is going to end up being the final so i'm intrigued who's going to get like the quarter and the semis but we'll find out about that later time and these are all great i, I, I guess there's two surprising one or one shocker and one that just made me upset I'm surprised Memphis didn't get on here with the new stadium that was built. Was that shocking to you at all? No. Okay. I think, I think it's more of you need like as cool as Memphis would be, you have to have a big stadium. Like same reason why DC, I don't think got on it. It's the same, like yeah. any smaller stadiums, like, cause you want to have these massive, stadiums that can hold as many people as possible like i guarantee you they each stadium is probably going to try to like oh we can fit an extra five thousand seats if we do this blah 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 like try to make it as top notch as possible because they you know as great as you know as great as you know uh i'm just going to repeat myself right now apparently but as like some stadiums are yeah as some stadiums are you don't want to have a world cup stadium and have twenty thousand people in it like you're going to want that minimum 50,000 if possible you're going to try to pack in as many people as possible so that's why like Atlanta's on the list because they can hold 70,000 at least New York's 70 80,000 if not more you know Dallas 100,000 people whatnot so you're gonna have the big stadiums and it makes it makes total sense I guess my thing was I didn't realize that Memphis's stadium was small you think I thought they you think I'm Nashville right the The one that you went to yeah Nashville the new one that you went to. yeah yeah I thought that was huge. No, so that's not like it's a it's a glorious stadium. I loved it. It was beautiful, but it only holds twenty something thousand. So you're not gonna have. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, but I mean, like you got, like you said, like these are huge stadiums. A lot of people could like get in there. They like, I'm. We should totally talk about what each because like you got some in the south. You got some in Texas. You yeah. got some in, uh, uh, like you know new york north like you got the older cities fun cities miami la san francisco yeah, it's gonna be really it's because also like if your team gets to play in miami atlanta you know the more la stadiums the more like kind of going out cities awesome and then if your team says has to play like in seattle it's not really going out town as much as miami so as it's like others. it's gonna be interesting just there's gonna be so much to talk about because when it's just one country like Brazil, like okay, Brazil is yes, they had in different of their major cities, but it's still Brazil as a whole. The, you have U.S., you have Canada, like that's Mexico. You have so many different like not just cities but countries participating in this, and it's gonna be so different because I'm pretty sure this one's in the summer, but you're also gonna have the temperature wise is gonna be very different. You're gonna have very games, Canada different games in Mexico, like it's gonna be crazy. And to even add to the, like, I really like this concept of having like a whole continent take care of the, the, the World Cup because, like, you hear a lot of stories about like how they build a bunch of these stadiums at the, the host country. And then a afterwards, lot of people, there's nothing. And then, and then like, this, the, the country goes like bankrupt because, like, they just do all the resources to get it. So I like how, like, we could sustain that. Yeah. Like, and we I have the stadiums, we have the facilities. And I don't think really you can really have other continents do it necessarily, but you could have a couple of countries next to each other. A couple countries. Um, I mean, and yeah, and I say continent yeah. because, like, it's only yeah, three, it's, but, like, the UK, you know, they could probably link something up between yeah. all of them. What I'm going to – what I find interesting, and I won't – we won't know, but, like, will Mexico's group be played in Mexico? Will you – like, right. you know, like, given U.S. is probably going to play some U.S. games because it's hard not to with how many stadiums are – 
will Canada's national team play in Canada? Like, where will these, like, are you going to try to have any home field advantage? Or are you going to have, like, Mexico play in the U.S. a little more in the group stages? Because I just, I don't know, it's intriguing. And we, of course, we have four years until this, so that as years go on, it's going to be. Yeah. yeah. All I know is something we could book is in 2026, I'm coming down to Atlanta and we're going to go to a game. <laughs> doesn't matter and then we're we'll going to be Boston. i'm going to be so broke we'll, i'm going to be we're gonna so just broke travel the u.s man let's just get an rv or dude, something I, and just like do it dude, i mean why I, not I, like, I, that would be four years of planning. four years of plan <laughs> oh That's man good. but from from that world cup to now hockey colorado i think is just gonna this is like I, – I know I had Tampa Bay Lightning on the record last, but, I mean, like, I've just been wrong about this team this whole time, I mean, so only fitting 2-0 against Tampa Bay Lightning. 7-0 last game. Yeah, they're what? just about to start. I don't – I think Tampa Bay wins at home tonight. I don't see a sweep. But Colorado put on the big boy pants the last game and just said, hi, I'm your dad. 7 0 them. I mean, it I was, mean, it was a massacre. I'm – I wasn't right on that. You know, I'll take full ownership. But I, as I it's told good. you, as I told you, this is not going to be a good day for you. I said the minute we got on, I want basketball. I want to talk about basketball. I want to talk about basketball. So let's talk a freaking about That's it. Fine. Let's talk get this about BS it. way. Let's get this stuff out of the way. Let's, let's hear the news that doesn't matter. The news that doesn't matter. Kyrie Irving. Oh, okay. That's of nothing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Brooklyn Nets. Uh, I forgot the word that there a, a disagreement is it Disputing, wasn't the word. Yeah, like a dispute. Like, okay, now he's linked to the Lakers, he's linked to the Clippers, he's linked to the Knicks. We'll see what happens with this guy. Um, but they better try to keep him to keep tight KD. Or I heard this one take where why not just take KD and Kyrie? Give me the farm. Yeah. Not oppose. But a bunch of nothing. We'll see what happens from that. Another thing that happened, Christian Wood to Dallas. This was a huge trade. This was huge. I actually I that. loved that. I like that a lot I for loved Dallas. It. Yeah. I mean, they gave up Boban. This was a lot of players. Boban, Trey Burke, Sterling Brown, Marquise Chris, and a 26 pick next year for Christian Wood. But I think it fits both teams well. It does. Rockets are rebuilding. You have... Luca there in Dallas needs another guy. Christian Wood could be that guy. I love it. I, I think it's good. I'm really yeah. excited to see what they do. But oh, buddy, oh, buddy, Brandon, Brandon, Brandon. I don't know why we disagree on things, like truthfully. Because like, you know, what I've did I do to out. you? What did I do to you to make you lose trust in me? When I told you about two months ago, Golden State was going to win it all. There was not a doubt in my mind. But, like, yeah. there was a doubt in yours. Wins the chip in six, like I said, and they won. We said we split the first two, split the second two, and then they will win out from there. And that's what happened. And, oh, my gosh. I remember texting you at halftime. I don't. No. Saying, I don't. I didn't reply. You said <laughs> there's my phone uh, down. I said, nope. no, not at halftime. You answered, you answered, you said there's two halves of this game. I did say that. I third quarter, the end of the third, it looked a little better. And then at the fourth, hey, and I just said, okay. fourth quarter, you said you texted me, don't you dare. And what did I do right after? Called. <laughs> I guess I hit that. I, hit, I said no. I and just then said no. I was, I was on my petty stuff, so I'm just gonna say it. I declined his Venmo that he put on the podcast last week, and I Venmo requested him the thirty bucks because he said that he was going to get me that if they want if it goes to yeah. Game Seven. And then, and then, because I'm petty, I put I sent him my address. He did. I sent him I'll my him address. Oh, well, I was did, on it. How did I reply to that? A blocked gift. I just said blocked. It was We're done. It was that spinning. <laughs> That are done. Like, oh my gosh uh what all joking aside this i thought i thought this was a really good finals uh a lot of storylines a lot of a lot of promising i think yeah in the future of the nba between these two teams but you can't go into that without talking about the digs that clay thompson said to memphis which i just thought were interesting about and now G- Draymond went as well straight at jackson yeah. Yeah, and they, 
But John Moran's for it. John Moran wants it. So he wants all the smoke, all the smoke. And then let's just get the me and you both agree out in this. Can Draymond stop talking? Like for once. I would like that. I would like that a lot. Like, because here's my thing. Game six, he actually had the best game of the entire the entire playoffs, I felt like. Yes, yes. And honestly, without him, how he played in game six, I'm not sure if they win game six because he he was really big when it came to facilitating the ball around. And he had some clutch points early on, which kind of changed the momentum. Yes. Um, but I really would like him just to not talk. He will never stop. He will never like stop. Too. And I, I don't like have a too. problem with him joining in on Clay going at no, yes. I have no problem. I have no problem with his comments today about like and for thank you to all the fans and for everybody else, F off, whatever. No problem with that. But like why on the day that game seven would have been, are you tweeting locked yeah. in? Because like you weren't locked in for most of the playoffs. Yes. Yeah. That was my issue. Like, like just stop. I watched the entire, the entire finals with my buddies Chris and George, and literally every time we hang out, George is like, he's like, you bet. I said, yeah, I put Draymond's under. Like I kept putting his under. Like the last two games I put his under, and I should not have because those are the two games he put over. But it's just like he was playing so bad. His over under was seven points. The thing like, you could always supposed- bet over is fouls because he got fouled three out of yeah. five games. Um. Dude, I there's so much to talk about, and I don't want to keep like wasting our time on Draymond because I feel like that's the least thing we should talk about. Yeah, I think before we go to Golden State, let's talk a bit about Boston though, okay. because there's a sure. few things that I think are some. There were some weaknesses that finally got exposed. One, the defensive player of the year was not defensive defensive player of the year in that series. I'm sorry, he was not. Chris is a huge Boston fan. He agrees with me. Like. He's like he's not, not he's not doing well enough. But no one was really doing well enough. But right. Tatum especially. I'm sorry to say, and if you can, you know, this you can go against me. Tatum became Ben Simmons in the finals, especially in the last half of the game six. He might have shot the ball, but if you look at the last four to five minutes, he double clutched every time they would pass. There was one shot he had from three. I can't remember if it was the first half or like early in the third. That was a flat out, like it hit rim barely and looked like an air ball. And after that, it just seemed like he wasn't going to shoot the ball. He had zero points in the second half. If that's your star, you have to score. That's a bold take. I don't necessarily disagree. But I think... For at least Boston, you you had it right. Marcus Smart did not play like the defensive player of the year. No offense. Yeah. If you're the best defensive team in the league, Golden State should not have been able to do that to you. Technically. Like if it, it should have gone Technically, seven. yeah. They shouldn't. Yeah. Um, like the, all those third quarters should never have happened. My issue with your take on Tatum is that Ben Simmons was never the guy in Philly. It was Joel no, but they Embiid. they wanted him to be the guy. I know, I know he wasn't the guy, but I'm saying like that space Tatum became as much as him as it seemed anyone would because like Ben Simmons wasn't the guy, yes, but he also was supposed to put up points, and neither of them like put we, up points. But we were talking, yeah. Tatum was supposed to put up points. I think what I saw more than that was. Tatum's youth and then Jalen Brown's stubbornness. I think that's, that's what it made. When I was watching Tatum, I didn't think like he's afraid of the moment. I just said he's young. That's fair. Like he doesn't understand. But when I saw Brown play, every five, every dude, no offense, mean you could create th- better offense than this guy. He's driving in every time. And, like, to him and Tatum, and I watch J.J. Reddick's podcast, so it's not, like, my NBA analysis, but, like, I didn't even realize it. But every time they drive, they drive and they launch off of one leg, but then they, like, try to get out of it. when They, they were, go, try- like, they were going for the foul the way too much. Him. Way too much trying for fouls. Exactly. And I said this in the last pod. If Boston turns the ball over more than 15 times, they're not winning game six. They turn it over, I want to say, 24, 25, if not more, it felt like. And I – I feel bad for Al Horford because he tried his hardest in that third quarter to backpack 
He said, give me yeah. the ball and I'm going to make it. It does not matter. Like he brought them back to within eight, maybe I want to say something like that. It was and within the, the, the third digits. ended and they were very close. And I said, I looked around. I was like, there's a chance. Like, there's a chance. And the second, fourth quarter came out and it was just turnover, turnover, turnover. And I was like, well, and, and, and I guess this goes to your point. Tatum had a hundred turner turnovers. First player ever. Throughout the, I mean, that's insane. <laughs> like, yeah. But like his yeah. issue with Golden State having all those turnovers is that he was trying to play iso ball when Golden State wants you to play iso ball. Like, yep. okay, dribble around, do your thing, man. I'm just going to guard everyone else and then clog the lane. And when you try to go in, swamp you, and you've proven that you're not – you're going to cut off off the court just by the way you launch up, you're going to turn it over. So, like, he's dribbling too low. Steph is short. Clay's not as tall as him. Like, they're going to be able to steal the ball. Yeah. The other thing I saw was how many times was Steph guarding Al Horford? Yeah. And they didn't expose that. that exactly. Especially the way Horford has been playing the last few games. Yeah. Like, honestly, throughout, I would say throughout the playoffs. Like, he's been yeah. a bucket. Like, yes. that should have – I think it was youth from Tatum. I think it was stubbornness from Brown. I think Marcus Smart, he, he, when you're the third guy, when your guys aren't cooking, you're going to have a hard time cooking. You know what I mean? Like, it's just demoralizing. Because there was a few moments he had that their defense, you could see the Boston, the, the yeah. leftovers of Boston's defense, but you can't see much more than that. And I think Udoka's phenomenal first year. Like, I think if you take out Monty Williams, he could have been easily the coach of the year when you look at the whole year. Yeah. But, I mean. I definitely it, think they'll be back, but they have to. They just have to. The they need a point guard. They need a point yeah. guard to take off this pressure from Tatum to not play that way. And like, we'll talk about the the, the second half of that Tatum piece later. But yeah, point guards. Since we brought it up, is Steph top ten? Not just a point guards, but a players. Because his Dude. resume now basically has it. Okay. Well, I know how you feel. I know how you feel. One and Do two. You? I think one and two. We probably have the same people for one and two. Let's just like be okay. very honest. We have Jordan, we have LeBron somewhere in that order. We'll always argue from, from now until we yes. die and further. But it's like true. that will have my the deathbed, same first at, two. Yeah. At my funeral, if you're still coming to my funeral, when you go look at me in my casket, a thing's going to pop up and say Jordan is the goat. But I'm just going to have my middle finger up, bro. <laughs> I'm just going to, because I know what you're thinking. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. <laughs> I don't even need to look at you and I can just be like, oh, I know what this guy's going to say. I know what's happening. Well, you, we have those two guys, right? Yeah. Now, I'm not saying he's going to pass Le Jordan. I'm not going to say that. But he, he tied LeBron. He tied LeBron with this chip. I wouldn't put – I put him in the top ten, but on the outside looking in to, like, the top if five. You, if you – yeah, if you have the Mount Rushmore, you know, your top four or five players, and you have the Mount – not quite Rushmore, but top ten still. He's on that one. Like, he's – He's, he's on that close, one. He, like, because his, his career is not over yet. He – Yeah. I put him at – you know, you could put him at six right now if you want to – you know, six, seven, whatever you want to put him at. He could still – like, he can make his way into that top five. And people are going to have a problem like this year. Like they're going to say, oh, he didn't have to beat LeBron. He didn't have to beat Giannis. Like he didn't really have to beat the guy to win it all. Like, but that's not his problem. I mean, he, I know. He... I'm, I'm like, <laughs> well, it's not his fault because what was it? A couple years ago, the team that he beat was a team that beat LeBron. It's like, it's not, it's not his fault LeBron's out there. It's like you win the Super Bowl and they're like, well, you didn't beat Brady. Well, he wasn't, he didn't make the Super Bowl. How's that my it. fault? Yeah. How's that my exactly. fault? So I, when that people debate that, I'm like, no, that's you can't debate that one because it's not his fault at all. Like, it's not like he was like, you know what? Don't give me the Lakers. I'll take the Clippers instead. Let me have a different team. Like, I don't want to. No, exactly. I'm, I'm glad they go with LeBron again. I'm sure because that would and just but, make it even more cemented. But then, like, I guess my question to you is like, can you have two point guards in your top five? You know what I mean? Like, can you have think, Magic and Steph in there? Because they're two completely yeah. different players. So and do, that's what I was going to say. I think you can purely because of how Steph has changed the game. Right. Because he, he's not just the best shooter. Like, he literally, without him, shooting has gone from, like, a three-point line to a four-point line. Like, 
where he pulls up a five point line where he pulls up like he has changed the game and he he is the best shooter ever so far like and probably that will agree. ever see. Like, I think he's the best. But that's like saying like is the sky blue? Like Steph Curry is the best shooter ever. You know what I mean? Same thing. I was I was anticipating you just say no just to spite me, but I respect. Well, that. I'm gonna say this. I don't think he gets higher than five on the top five. If they if they come back next year and he wins MVP and they win the finals, he gets top five, but not higher than five. I don't think so. Because no I don't. What? Because like let's just be, let's just call it what it is. And you hate him. He's never going to pass LeBron in all time. He's not going to pass LeBron or Jordan. Those two can't, n- Those two won't be passed. Now everyone after that from three to five, I think people have like Kareem, Magic, Kareem, Magic, you know, Bird, Bird. I think Curry is at Bird's level right now. So, like, if you want to have Bird at six, Curry at seven, vice versa, I think they're, like, 1A, like, 6A, 6B. I think they're both at six right now just because of whatever. But you have Magic, Kareem, Wilt. You could have – I don't know who else you want. Throwing Shaq if people want to throw in Shaq, you know, whatever. But I see him solidifying another ring. He will have as many as Kobe. He'll have as many – I think he he tied Shaq already for rings. Shaq had four. I mean, if he gets five, like, he, I, he has can, to be five. I can but I don't him. see him passing Magic only because Magic was, like, the point guard you think of, and you can't put, like, the successor before the guy that literally – you know what I mean? So He's a guard saying, one he, through five. You're saying you have he to put pass. the guy that came first higher than the second guy? No. That's, I'm saying that's... Him point guards. <laughs> Okay. I'm still oh, in point oh, guards. Just in point guards. Oh, uh, I almost had you. First of all, I almost first had of all, you. I almost <laughs> had you. <laughs> you thought you had, had you. That's like, that's like. I was hoping okay. you were just going to agree to that statement. I was hoping. Horses and cars. Horses and cars. Oh, horses God. and cars. Anyhow. They're two different types of point guards, is what I I'm think, trying to say. No, yeah. I think if Curry gets two more rings, you could put him at four. I think he'd get to four if he gets two more. But with one more, I think he stays. I think he stays behind Magic. But I think if he can get two Do more, and him being the guy, two, honest, I could see it happening because the young talent at Golden State, which this is a great transition into the next part, is so yeah. high that if they can keep everyone, I could see another couple. But can Wait, they keep everyone? Me. Where do you have stuff right now? I'd have him at six right now. Okay, so six, yeah. seven, we kind of see how that Cool, but you Dude. you think he could get two more? You could eat one more. One, I think one more the... for sure. One more for sure. I think he'll win another championship for sure. I think he'll okay. get five rings. But if can he can he get six? Is the question. But like for those two championships, I guess this is where I'm struggling. He, could, I think he has one more chip in him. Where he's the guy, and then, but I don't see yeah. two more with him being the guy. That's fair. Like I see something like he's on his farewell tour from the like he's about to retire. He goes to a good team. He's a shooter. Shooters don't die like that. He's just making buckets. He wins a chip. He gets so six. You, you but think, I don't you, see that. So you think Curry him. will leave Golden State before he retires? I see him either leaving for one last push or I see them being able to surround him with a bunch of like essentially what the Lakers were trying to do with actually good and talented human yeah. beings. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. I see something like that happening. I think he's one of those guys that just retires with Golden State calls it a day. I think they're going to keep their core guys. My question is, those young players, how do, how well do they develop to become like the next Steph, Clay, Dre? Like, can do you think they can keep all those young players though? So. You know what, man? I, I this is something I was thinking of during the game. I think they totally can, because I think the one thing Golden State does very well is has such a good culture that like all of those guys are looking around. They're not KD. No offense, like. They're going to look yeah. at this and they're going to be like, okay, you're telling me if I could rock with these guys, 
I already have a chance at the um, the chip. They're not like guys that are ball dominant. And like Draymond, who is ball dominant, passes the ball, doesn't shoot. So like, I'm going to get my points. I'm going to get my minutes. I'm going to get my playing time. And it's fun. And we get the chance for a chip. Yeah. I think people are going to be looking at it as like Tom Brady. Steph okay. Curry being the Tom Brady where if he's going to take pay cuts, you could steal from Peter to feed Paul, spread it out. I think they keep pool for the foreseeable future. I think they keep Kaminga. I think they keep all of those guys for at okay. least four years. I'll give them four years. If and one were to year leave. Don't, if one were. Who do you think would leave? I think it's going to be Wiggins. I agree. I do agree to that because he proved himself, and like this he's, is what he, he also he was supposed he also, to be. He's a little bit older than the other ones, so, so he he has a couple more years. Not like much, but I mean comparative to like pool and stuff. So, but like I think if they lose Wiggins, they don't win the chip next year. That's fair. I think they need someone like that. I don't think Kaminga or Pool is ready for that type of work. Kaminga, I think in two years Kaminga can be. But next year, no. And, and that's what scares also, me. He also needs more time. But if Wiggins leaves, he gets more time. He gets more time. But, like, Kaminga also is a bucket. He developed very well with Wiggins. I think if Wiggins could look at this season and be like, you know what, I found my place. Like, I was in Minnesota all that time. I was not doing well. I was the guy. But over here, I'm the guy. Gets 42 and 13 in the finals. And I'm still, like – not like holding the weight of the world on my shoulders that freedom is so relieving which is why i think golden state's so dangerous because at the end of the day they're going to point fingers at steph and no offense draymond before they point at anyone else because draymond's going to open his mouth all the time and steph is the best player on that team now so no pressures on you all the pressures on them you can just go out there and ball and like yeah win a chip like they did this year that's cool yeah i mean i definitely I think they're going to try to keep everyone, but I could just see one person leaving just for money. Like somebody might be like, I have my chip now. Let me go get paid. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I could see that, but I don't see any KDs on this team. No, no, not like KD wise, but like they, if someone goes, they don't want to be going to be the, they might be, they're literally like, it's like they would go to say like Miami or to, Orlando, Dal- like somewhere where you have the guy, but you want to be like the guy's guy. You want to be Robin. Yeah. yeah. You want to be Clay to Curry. Right. Yeah. And I don't think Poole's going to ever leave. I think Poole's stuck. There. I think the only Poole leaves is if they just can't afford to pay him a max contract someday. If they have like, too many max contracts yeah. and they're already – because, like, that's the problem when you have this stack of a team. Eventually, you can't – you know, the luxury tax is just too much sometimes. But – That's why also, they need to capitalize on this. Yeah. Big also, time. I remember before we forgot – we forgot to mention this earlier when I thought Miami. P.J. Tucker declined his options, so he's becoming a free agent. Just a little side note. If you – know, I'll, I'll shoot to go good to defensively, text. but – I'll shoot to go to the text and see if he can pick him up on the Lakers – um, thank you for letting me know. Uh, yeah, it's cool. Um, the goat owns the goat owns Charlotte though. Just remember. So if you're texting him, he's gonna Charlotte Horner. Uh, yeah, owns a team. Owns. Okay. Anyhow, but I think this. I think the I last thing. Can I ask really you one more okay. question about the finals before you go? Where do you put her in terms of coaching? Well, I didn't mention this to you, forgive think, me, but I just had this thought. Yeah, and I no. want to know what you think. Well, um, I'm actually sorry. I was the hockey games and on my TV and they just took away uh Colorado goal in the first period. So oh, crap. it was one oh now it's not one oh, but um so Tampa Bay saved themselves there. But no, for Kerr, I think right now I think if you talk player and coach wise, he's definitely like up there just because he has so many championships as you know, both. Um, I don't have him as the best coach yet, even though he has like the craziest winning percentage in the playoffs. Ever. Is it? Yeah. But it helps when you have the best shooter ever. I think I'd have him like at three or four coach wise. 
because as great as he's been in the playoffs, there has been some years where they're like the regular season, they're not up there. Like, they've made their runs, but they haven't always been the, you know, and then you have two championships where you have KD, you know, you have, you have the big stars where you're supposed to win. This year, having the team they had with injuries and whatnot, having your main guy injured for a while near the back half of the season, having to push without Steph helped him a lot. So I think I probably have him like maybe three, but probably four. I don't see much. I don't see much differently than you. I think Steven Jackson doesn't get, or no, not Steven Jackson, Mark Jackson doesn't get enough credit for this team because he was the guy that laid the foundation yep. for Kerr. I agree with you that he was supposed to win with those teams, but he also has to coach still. Oh, no, that's what I'm saying. That's because why like still Steve Nash had those three. Yeah. And like they're supposed to win, but he, they didn't. I think he's. I mean, yeah. And OKC still, had, had three players that could have won 10 championships. They didn't. So you still have to coach. And I think where I put him in is with Bill Jackson, Greg Pop, and, like, honestly, Eric Spolstra in terms of, like, schemes as well. Like, those, yeah. that company. Uh, but I don't see him getting, surpassing those guys. Like, I think his legacy is kind of set in stone. You know? I feel like he somehow, he would have to win one with Clay and Steph both like out for the season like if he won with to, cool Wiggins, yeah. yeah if he won with like a starting five but not his starting five you know like could move up i don't think he i don't think he can get to number one i don't think I, unless he stays with them for like unless he pulls like a greg popovich and stays with them forever he I, and then he'd wins. have to pa pass pop for all, like wins and stuff i feel like like he'd have to pass all the pops records yeah, and stay so with the same team. Who do, you, who do you have as number one all-time coach-wise? I mean, I'm going to have to say Pop. Okay, I yeah, that's who I have. That's like, yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Like, for him to be the best, he has to pass Pop. Because Pop won over decades, too. Like, that's the thing. What's Pop did, like, they're in a dynasty run right now. You've won four and eight years. But to be the best, you got to win over decades and pop. And that's why decades. I was debating between him and Phil Jackson. But Phil Jackson, talk about having winning without your five guys. I mean, this guy had went from Jordan and Kobe. Yeah. And then went to the Knicks and sucked. So, like, that's why I don't have him at one. I have pop at one. Yeah. Pop, Jackson, then I guess Kerr for now, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. For right now, today. three, but you know, I might wake up tomorrow and be to four, be, have him at four. Yeah, I might, we might know this just be thinking yeah. of the guy that, yeah, yeah. But give me, but I think before this I is, cut you off, let me, where were you going? I was just said, let's, let's swap it up a little bit from talking about the best of all time and to talk about the people that are the next generation after these players. And do yeah. you think that the media uh, fan base, us like just as you know fans of the game are holding some of these young players too high and too accountable to the legends of the game not just necessarily in basketball but specifically basketball since right now it's you know it just ended so like we can talk about it more but even like in soccer in other sports and baseball football, are we holding these younger players too accountable like are we seeing like you know tatum uh devin booker you guys are supposed to be like Kobe, and then when you, you know they have bad performances in the playoff stuff, is it are we putting too much pressure on them by saying you're supposed to be the next Kobe, you're supposed to be the next Magic, you, you know, your next St Steph Kerr? I mean, uh, Steph, you know, like what do you think? Hmm. I think there was two points to I think you're asking two different questions. Okay, I think the way that I understood it the first half of what you were saying was like, we compare them too much to the legends. I think what we do actually is we allow them to skip a step. Like what I mean by that is like Devin Booker, you're supposed to be Kobe. Oh, you dropped 70 or 60 something in the game. That's Kobe S. 
but like he did it one time and then like he loses to Dallas in the first round. You know, like yeah. we were calling him like the next co Mamba Mamba mentality, Tatum the same thing. Like we we see greatness in players, we call it out, and then like we don't allow them to actually prove it to us that that's who they are. But like they had a game or two or, or stretch. I think what we need to do is allow them to figure out. I think what we need to do is stop like in the draft too, they say like, oh, this guy looks like Tom Brady, you know? And then everyone's like, how are you comparing him to Tom Brady? Well, no, he looks like Tom Brady. I think that's what it needs to be more. And I think that's what, I think that's what I like most about soccer is we, we have the next generation of players from Messi and Ronaldo already playing, but we don't compare them given to Messi and playing. Ronaldo. But we're not like, you're supposed to be Messi. Like Mbappe, you're supposed to be the next Messi. You're like, you know, whoever you want to say he's supposed to be. Like we have these young stars that will get up there to be the next greats of the next generation. Like, you know, but we aren't like, given soccer is a little different because like you're with a team since you're like 12, basically. Like when you're a prodigy, you're, 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 you're growing, but we have all these profiles in like baseball, basketball, football of like, oh, this person has this these talents, so they're supposed to be like this person. But basketball, I think, is the worst one when it comes to it. Because even in football, we say, like, they're like Tom Brady. They're like Peyton Manning. But we're not like, you're going to be Peyton Manning. Like, you're going to – like. I would I say like they did that lanes, a lot more recently with Patrick Mahomes. They, yeah, they do. But I'm saying, like, compared to basketball, basketball is like – like you said, Devin Booker drops 60, 70 points in one game. All of a sudden, you're, spo- you're Kobe. Like, you know, it's – Trey Young and like all these guys go to three, a Kobe yeah. camp one time when they're 18 and oh and like I, Kobe yeah. was his idol like and Kobe was everyone's idol could we stop with this? yeah and yeah. like I res- you know I respect Tatum for you know repping Kobe all throughout the finals you weren't playing well enough though like I feel like he was too mental in his head he was like you know it's just like play your game when you play your game you're gonna get there but you were like he was trying to be Kobe not Tatum yeah yeah absolutely and I think, I, and I think the reason why I don't hate that there was like two questions to me was like Jordan, right? Like, what did Bird say? He said, "This is God disguise, uh, disguised as Kobe Bryant, like on the basketball court." Like, I don't think there's any problems with setting the standards for a player. Oh I mean, yeah, they did it with Kobe, and I think they did it with LeBron, and whatever we believe. We could both biasly say Jordan lived up to it, Kobe lived up to it, and LeBron, as much as we don't like it, looked, looked, lived oh, no. up to it. Yeah. Coming out of high school and, and doing that. But, like, you have to set those standards for them to live up to those standards. And, like, if they don't, like, quacks like a mongoose, uh, Stephen Knight phrase, quacks like a mongoose and it walks like a mongoose, it's not a dang giraffe. You know, like, it's, yeah. you know, whatever. But I think what becomes too dangerous is they don't prove it to us yet. Like, and they like, and that's, that's the problem. Them to I feel be like, oh, this is Kobe yeah. going to the Lakers. This is Tatum and Brown. That's like, you know, Scotty and Michael, like, no, they, it's not like they have to prove something individually. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think we agree on that one just cause it's just, it's fine to have to set the bar that high for them. But I think we're not necessarily us specifically, but as in general, we if they don't you know exceed the bar or meet the bar at that point, they're a failure for us. And it's like, well, you didn't do your and job. And then they're canceled from this. Yeah. And then they get can it's this cancel culture too, right? Like the minute and now Tatum, did you see these things about Tatum? I mean, God rest his soul, Kobe. But like the, with the text, Tatum and stuff. text. Oh my gosh, he says never text me back. I yeah, yeah. There were so many, it. and like I mean, I was I was laughing just because I was like, this is hilarious, but it's also so bad. Like, but it's like, so bad. And what's weird to me, this is the one player we compare Luca to LeBron. Like, let's be real, we compare him to LeBron. But when he went to the finals, no one was like, oh, he didn't like. It's we. I feel like because he's compared to LeBron, he gets that like. Oh, he didn't have backup pieces. With Tatum, though, the Kobe comparison, same with Devin Booker. It's like, well, you didn't drop 60 to win the game. It's an unfair comparison. Like the fact that some players, when we compare them to other players, we make it more big deal. But when you compare, you know, Luca, like Luca with LeBron, he loses in the, you know, in the playoffs, and it's like, well, he didn't have his pieces around him and stuff. 
why aren't we putting more pressure on him at that point? You know, no, a total, I, I totally agree. And I think that's going to be, and LeBron's my goat, but that's going to be the narrative of LeBron in the future is this Luca type of comparison, right? Like he, oh, he plays like LeBron. He brought the guys kicking and screaming, but they didn't win anything. And yes. like LeBron, but like, I think what you're saying about Tatum is, and like Booker is just, I think like we see eye to eye on it and it's this cancel culture. Now that we're going to look at Tatum next year and be like, oh, he's weak, mentally weak. Well, yeah. like he's young. Like that's why I say he looked young to me. And like Booker, like he had, I, I blame Chris Paul for that more than I blame Booker because Booker exactly. looked young as well. Yeah. So, but, oh, back to the Steph debate. Steph definitely beat Chris Paul in all time point guards, right? You have him higher than oh, yeah. Oh, okay, 100%. Cool. Okay, cool. Chris Paul is an amazing point guard, but he, he has to make, he actually, he needs to win, in my opinion, for him to be up there. And I like, don't see just, him winning any ever, <laughs> honestly. Yeah, I don't. I think he's, his chances are gone at this point, I think, honestly. Um, that was a good is, question, though. Media. Yeah. Let's end it on this. This wasn't even this didn't talk about. Listen, do you think Boston stays together? Do you think they trade away? Do you think they trade forward? Do you think anyone will leave or what? Dude, you know, I feel like I feel like they've been saying they're gonna trade bait Brown and Tatum for a while. Like they can't win both. I think they keep them. I think I think they keep them, honestly, and they get a pick up they pick up a point guard and they have to go small. I think that's what this team ultimately becomes. That's right. I you think can't get rid of Smart. You can't if, get rid if, of Brown. If anyone Smart. leaves, I think Horford goes. Either he retires or he goes somewhere else. And if I was I him, I'd retire. I, w- I would love for him to come to the Hawks just for one last year, just to ride off at the sunset and see what could happen. No, you guys are going to get AD. Give me Horford also. No, get- not DA. AD for no, John no. Collins and Clint Capella. No, no. I do not want Anthony Davis. I don't want the glass cannon. Why would you do this to me? I told you. I stay composed this whole time. And he says two letters. And this is what happens. I would rather play myself than have AD on my team. There's a higher chance I can at least stay on the court than AD. I couldn't block anything. Couldn't score anything. But it's okay because we're still playing five people on the court. With AD, we're playing 4v5. Like, you might as well just put a freaking glass cup on the court and just see how long it takes to break, because that's what AD is. It's like AD's Josh Nasser when it comes to basketball. Okay, you don't have to do him like that. You don't have to do Josh I'm going like to do him that. like that, because guess what? Yeah. I got my championship pick, baby, right? And, you know. Oh, you got I just, one. Hockey, hockey, you're looking, hockey, you're looking a little wrong. I didn't put money on that. I didn't put money on that one. Just wait till baseball. Honestly, I just want to say this, guys. The minute baseball starts, Brandon's going to leak me dry. And he knows it. He told me he's going to try and leak me dry. Playoff baseball. Playoff baseball. I'm letting you have the regular season. Let's specify. Playoff baseball, all you are mine. It's going to be great. Venmo is just going to be money, 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 money. (laughs) (laughs) I'll just wear my jersey the whole playoff season for baseball. That's fine. That's fine. We'll live it up like that, but but great pod guys next week we're gonna have big news for you guys so be on the lookout for that and uh Brandon. hopefully hopefully we're gonna have a special guest they had to, they got called into work this week so we had yeah. last minute whoa like changes real job happens you know because we got those still um <laughs> but so next week we're hoping to get them back on if not someone else because we want to give y'all another one uh haven't decided what sport we're gonna talk about but that's happening. And then we're probably going to switch a couple things up for a little bit because we're both going to be traveling, but we're still going to give y'all content and keep y'all up on everything. Yeah. And more details to follow next week yeah. because th- these changes will have to happen sort of quicker. We apologize for it, a shorter notice, but you know, we're still going to be making stuff. We're still going to have content. We're still going to be roasting the heck out of each other. And I will be taking more of Brandon's money. So there's no need to worry. guys. Enjoy it while you can, because you're about to be in debt. I don't. And on that note, while I'm on this high, (laughs) we'll be in touch, guys. Peace. Peace.